Our future is sure in good hands with these young makers. Thanks so much. And we also want to thank musician Randy Reynolds and KLRE's producer of Hardly Sound for the music for that piece. Right now we're going to be turning our attention to creative uh, play in the garden. There are lots of cool things that you can do in the garden. And we are joined by one of our favorite guests, Amanda Moon from It's About Time. Welcome back to the program. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. And you have uh, unusual twists on a lot of fun garden stuff uh, that you brought along with us. I and, did. Uh, and we're going to dive right in and start talking about it, Amanda. You you know how to have fun in the garden, and that's what this segment's all about. Uh, there are lots of different plants and uh, that are available out there, but you've tried to bring some things that have a little twist on mm -hmm. them, which is really nice. We're going to start with a group of herbs, and tell me about the group as a whole. The group as a whole are basically different herbs that are unusual takes on something you're used to. Okay. So thyme, mint, oregano, mm -hmm. but something a little bit different. Okay, and there are also some <coughs> fruiting plants in there we're going to be talking about, too. There are. Yeah, well, let's dive in and start talking about a couple of them in particular. Okay. Um, I love the salvias and the sages, and you've brought pineapple sage. This is actually a culinary herb, right? It is, it is. And unlike this garden sage that you're used to using during Thanksgiving, stuffings, and mm -hmm. with turkey, this one actually has a fruity flavor to it. Mm -hmm. uh, morning sun is where it does best. It gets about three feet round, attracts hummingbirds to boot. Right. But I love to use it on fish and chicken because of that sort of subtle, sweet, flavor mm -hmm. that it gives to a dish. It sounds wonderful. Oh, it's fantastic. And it certainly has a beautiful bloom. It reminds me of the tropical sage, but even a little bigger and showier. It's bigger and showier and not nearly as invasive. Ah. It does not <laughs> proceed the way the, the coccinia does. Okay, so that's a good point. And uh, again, that is the uh, pineapple sage. Uh, right next to it, there's a, a lemon bush. Uh, and this is a plant that I've grown in the past. This is a pink lemon. Yes, the uh, Eureka lemon. Mm -hmm. This is actually a variegated form. The fruit itself is variegated. The flesh inside is pink. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of cool even for kids to grow to make their pink lemonade. And right. Beautiful, fragrant flowers in the spring and a fantastic container plant. I love growing these in containers. And the, it, what's you, you talk about variegated fruit. And, yes. And it, it, I've never seen anything, seen anything quite like it before. It's actually a yellow and green stripe. Right, yeah. Very, very pretty. Right. And then um, you also brought an unusual variety of thyme with you. And this is one that really piqued my curiosity. Yeah, it's um, unlike your, your regular thyme, your French and English, this is actually an oregano scented thyme. Hmm. So it's going to be a little bit more pungent, mm -hmm. a little bit stronger, but still works fantastic in Mediterranean dishes. Yeah, I love the pungency of oregano. Yes. I think about, for example, a Mexican um, uh, oregano, mm -hmm. for example. Which is too. a little sweeter, though. Yeah, okay. And I love to use that when I'm when I'm doing things, mm -hmm. uh, like making a, um, a more of a Mexican dish, like enchiladas. I will use, actually, the Mexican oregano in there. Yeah. Well, you also brought one of the hottest fruit plants there are out there right now, yes. which is the goji berry. And uh, people have been reading about goji berry as being one of the superfoods. Exactly. And, but we can grow this here in Central Texas. We can, and that has been fantastic to find out in the last couple of seasons mm -hmm. uh, that they're actually doing quite well here. About three feet round, they've got a flowing sort of draping uh, mm -hmm. form to them that you could even grow over a retaining wall. Uh, bloom in the summer, the fruit is produced in the fall, and then they come straight back in early spring. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been able to overwinter them with no problem, uh, just pop the berries right off and, and eat them fresh or throw them in salads. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I know that a lot of people will have fun growing that in the garden and people love exp uh, exploring mm -hmm. the different culinary opportunities that we have here. We're going to now shift our attention to the other side of the set, and this is where uh, we talk about having fun, and it looks yes. like you, you have ransacked a kitchen to create this <laughs> little garden here. <laughs> I love using old containers, mm -hmm. and some of my favorite are right from uh, an, an old 1950s, 1940s kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so um, I reuse a lot of the old enamelware, mm -hmm. uh, old kitchen pots right. uh, we've that used. That looks like the pot my mom used, in fact. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, you know, even the old buckets, mm -hmm. you know, the, the little galvanized tin buckets that sure. you would bring scraps out to the chickens with. Uh, uh, have just to make fantastic planters and just use a drill with a metal bit uh, mm -hmm. to punch holes in the bottom of it and they were, will go for years. Well, there's some really clever ideas there and uh, you want to encourage 
uh, kids to get into gardening. Yes. And so you've also uh, re are recommending some plants for a mini wildlife gardens that people can grow in their kitchenware or pots or whatever. Exactly. Well, you know, and even so many of the new homes now have smaller yards where we don't have a big place to build a garden. So the idea to get your kids involved is to take something about the size of a whiskey barrel mm -hmm. and create a micro wildlife garden okay. where you can combine things like butterfly weed and four nerve daisy, uh, mist flower right. with a little tray saucer of water that the kids can even decorate themselves mm -hmm. and a little cool flat stone that they can uh, search for and just create a little habitat for the butterflies. All right. Well, and, and a little backyard uh, mini habitat for the kids to enjoy. Exactly. And, and I, I think that would be a great thing for them. We're going to continue with our cool pot theme for a little bit because I want to, you, you brought some other things that I really want to call out. Behind me here, you have a beautiful, looks like an old trough. It's really. an old trough from a farm uh, that our family had for generations, mm -hmm. and they were tearing it down, so we went in there and grabbed every thing that we thought we could plant in, and this right. was one of them. Well, it, it looks great. I mean, this whole, the whole weathered you know, look and the rural mm -hmm. feel of it is wonderful. Tell me a little bit about the plant that's in it. It's really striking. Look, to me, it looks like miniature petunias. Uh, and it is of, of, of sorts. It's a million bells, and they come in all different colors. And mm -hmm. the nice thing about them is they can take the summer heat. And so when we lose our petunias right. in May, we can continue growing these through the summertime. Well, they're re super attractive and really bright yeah. colors. They look great in your containers. And speaking of containers, there are some that you brought here that I wanted to call out and have some fun with. now. This looks oddly familiar to me. <laughs> As I look at it up close, I look inside there and I, I this looks like an old LP. It is, it <laughs> is. And I realize that, you know, we're getting into sort of a sacrilegious as far as melting <laughs> records down. We're using them again, but if they're right. scratched, if you can't use them You're anymore, right. you put them in an oven at a low temperature until they just start to melt. Open your windows because <laughs> they're kind of stinky. Okay. And you can form it over a, a glass or metal bowl. Okay. And then as soon as it uh, cools slightly, just bend it into the shape that you want. Okay. It has a natural hole, and it's been fantastic to plant succulent gardens in. Well, I just want people to see how clever this is and, and what a cool-looking uh, planter it is. You have another one here mm -hmm. with a little variety of colanchos in it, and it looks terrific. Exactly. And, you know, those little colanchos are available at nurseries and even uh, florists. Sure. Well, a lot of fun, obviously. And then... I think the very first thing I ever did gardening-wise was a terrarium, and you brought one here, that, and these are really popular right now. They really are. My nine-year-old nephew just brought one the other day home to build himself. Mm -hmm. And this particular one, there is dirt in the center, but they've taken decorative sand to make the outside ornamental and a little bit of sphagnum moss, mm -hmm. and just find little bits and pieces of house plants that right. you can tuck in there and just keep it misted. Well, I think the, lots of great ways to, again, maintain the level of creativity in the garden. Um, let's go back to the wildlife theme because mm -hmm. you have a shade wildlife garden behind you as it well. Is. My house, I have a lot of shade. Mm -hmm. I can't do a lot of the other butterfly plants, but here we've got ideas that are going to attract birds and butterflies. And that includes, this is moonshine yarrow, right. which blooms a beautiful yellow, pigeonberry, um, the chili pekins even mm -hmm. are fantastic for birds. And sure. I've even tucked in a few inland sea oats so that you've got actually a little bit of a, a hiding place for them right. in the container. Well, again, another little project for the kids. It is. But to this, it doesn't have to be in the full sun, which is great. Now, um, we did a little twist on some of the herb plants yes. a little while ago. Let's continue with some unusual uh, veggies and things here. Now, you were talking about this, and it looks like an onion to me. But, it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tell me about this, because there's uh, this uh, kind of has a cool feature to it. This has quickly become one of my favorite. This is mm. an Egyptian multiplying onion that mm. I got from a farmer friend of mine. And it is evergreen, okay. which means you've got onions 12 months out of the year. You can use it as a green onion and actually just harvest the outsides. Right. Or the way I like to use it, too, is as a chive. Mm -hmm. Onion chives kind of struggle here. Mm -hmm. And so this allows me to be able to use that flavoring. Right. Um, without too much care. I had it go through the drought in 2010 with absolutely no irrigation, mm -hmm. and it never missed a beat. And it spreads. It spreads. It multiplies out. And yes. And colonizes. Uh, it's also called walking onion. Yes. It, yes. For a reason. Exactly. It gets up and moves <laughs> around the garden a little bit. You get some started, and you're <clears> good to go. Okay. Well, real briefly, you also brought some, uh, uh, some variations on asparagus fern. 
And we're, everybody now is familiar with the foxtail, which has kind of taken over for all the other asparagus ferns. Yes. But there are other varieties out there, and they're a lot of fun to garden with. And I brought Ming and Plumosa. Mm -hmm. And the cool things about those is they're not as sticky uh, as yes. the, the spring or eye <laughs> and the foxtails can be. Right. Um, they they are soft. They so one of them climbs. The other one is just a nice bush that's mm -hmm. very uh, fun. They're textural for right. kids. All right. And full sun to shade, and they're winter hardy yeah. most years. And I love this one. It has such a striking form to a very Japanese gar zen look. Exactly. Right. And you can actually train it up a post. Right. Well, beautiful plants and a lot of fun. Thanks again, Amanda, for being on the program. We've really enjoyed visiting with you. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you having me. And I just want to remind everyone that we've got a website, iatime.com, where you can actually register to receive newsletters that come out every week that always have a little bit of uh, garden information and uh, uh, also, we're having workshops on Sundays through the spring and again in the fall. And now it's time for our friend Daphne.